NEAR protocol is a decentralized layer one blockchain that aims to provide advancements in usability, efficiency and scalability through its unique infrastructure. Founded in 2017 by Ilya Polosukin and Alexandra Skirinov, NEAR aims to improve upon the shortcomings of Ethereum, such as network congestion and high gas fees. How exactly does it do that? Let's find out. NEAR provides a highly scalable, congestion-free network to facilitate extremely fast transactions. It does that by introducing several modifications to Ethereum's architecture. Let's look at all of them. NEAR achieves scalability through a process called sharding. Sharding reduces congestion in the network by dividing the blockchain into smaller portions chains called shards. Each shard is a parallel blockchain with its own set of validators, and all of them together constitute the near network. You can think of sharding as the parallel checkout lanes in a supermarket. All of them have different cashiers and different transactions, but all of them use the same underlying software and add up their revenue to the supermarket's total revenue. NIA implements a slightly modified version of sharding called Nightshade. Without going into the technicality behind it, Nightshade is basically a dynamic version of sharding that splits and merges shards based on the utilization of the network. Nightshade lists all the transactions within a block and splits them into chunks. Each shard is then responsible for verifying only a particular chunk, instead of requiring every node to download the full state of the network. This functionality corresponds with a finality mechanism called Doom Slug in ensuring that even when data is missing, blocks can still be validated and added to the chain. This makes NIA infinitely more scalable and resilient to short-term usage spikes. To finalize the transactions in the network, NIA's validators use a consensus algorithm called TPOS or Threshold Proof of Stake. TPOS is a modified version of the proof-of-stake mechanism that chains like Ethereum and Solana operate on. In proof-of-stake, validators stake their coins, or in other words, lock their coins to validate the transactions in the network. If they add malicious transactions, their stake is slashed. This incentivizes validators to only add legitimate transactions to the block. Thresholded proof-of-stake is a specific form of proof-of-stake consensus that helps increase the network participation by distributing rewards more equitably. It does so by placing a maximum reward per shard based on the amount of near that's staked. This helps encourage more participation throughout the network. Large validator pools are decentivized, and shards with low stake counts offer higher rewards to willing validators to increase security. In addition to security to attract users, blockchains also need some exciting apps running on them. But most devs want to develop apps for the bigger, more attractive chains like Ethereum and not the newer, smaller chains. To tackle this problem and attract devs to build these apps, NIA supports common coding languages and has an in-house developer stack to make app launches easier on the platform. Further, in December 2021, Project Aurora was introduced into the NIA ecosystem, like Ethereum has Layer 2 protocols like Arbitrum to scale the network. NIA has Aurora. It is an EVM-compatible protocol, meaning that it uses the exact same code as used on the Ethereum virtual machine. This allows developers to easily copy their smart contracts from Ethereum and paste them directly on NIA's blockchain. This solves a major problem in the transition into a cross-chain ecosystem, opening up major Ethereum-based dApps to NIA and vice versa. To facilitate seamless transfers with Ethereum, NIA uses a bridge called the Rainbow Bridge. But before we talk about that, it would mean a lot to us if you could hit the like button. We make these videos every week and your likes keep us going. Rainbow Bridge provides a connection between the NIA blockchain and Ethereum. It does so in a way that requires significantly less trust in third-party custodians. 
Nia's Rainbow Bridge uses light client verification to ensure safe transfer of coins between the two chains. Let's take a look at an example to understand how it works. Say you want to transfer some ETH from Ethereum to Nia. To begin, you deposit and lock ETH in a Nia Rainbow Bridge vault on the Ethereum side. A validator verifies this deposit and sends the block header of this transaction to its counterpart on Nia. A validator on Nia then verifies the block header, checks that the deposit transaction indeed took place in the block and begins the process of issuing this ETH representation on Nia. The confirmation that everything is in order results in the minting of ETH on Nia. There's now ETH locked in the vault on Ethereum and an equal value representation of ETH on Nia. Should you want to remove your ETH from the bridge, you must burn your ETH representations on Nia before unlocking your ETH on Ethereum. Using the Nia Rainbow Bridge only requires trusting Ethereum's validators, Nia's validators, and the quality of the code. Practically all of the most significant bridge exploits have involved a critical threshold of validator keys associated with multi-sig control of the bridge falling into the wrong hands. As such, the rainbow bridge between the two-layer one blockchain seems reliably secure. This brings us to the final segment of this video. The tokenomics of NIA. No protocol research can be complete without discussing the tokenomics of the protocol's native token. Let's dive in. The NEAR token is used to power the transaction fees and other operations on the NEAR network. Any functioning applications on the network use the NEAR token. In addition, it also facilitates several other functions including being used for data storage on the blockchain, staking and running validator nodes, participating in protocol governance, emissions for rewards, and powering on-chain incentives. The NEAR token inflates at a rate of 5% per year. This 5% supply increase is split between validator rewards, 4.5%, and protocol development, 0.5%. Additionally, NEAR's economic model includes a burn mechanism, discarding 70% of every transaction, with the remaining 30% paid back to the contract creator. This is a unique design versus other blockchains, such as Ethereum, as it incentivizes applicants to build on NIA as they receive that 30% cut from transaction fees. On Ethereum, applications themselves don't benefit from gas fees, as it all goes to validators. Token Launch the most troublesome vulnerability of NEAR protocol is found in its centralization. NEAR protocol's privatized token sales, combined with its decision to control over 50% of the tokens internally, has sabotaged its participation model in consensus. Having the one-token, one-vote model for governance is only ever appropriate in terms of decentralization if the tokens themselves are widely distributed giving anyone in the community a chance to fully participate in the network. In total, the initial allocation of the 1 billion tokens at Genesis is presented in detail in the following graphic from NIA. It's highly important to note the above graphic is misleading. While it appears tokens were distributed nearly consistently in many different categories, the actual breakdown can be summarized like this. 52.6% to the developers and NEAR Foundation, 35.4% to private investors, 12% to the community through public sale. In reality, this was one of the most centralized token launches in the ecosystem from 2020 on. Image below for comparison to other popular L1s. The community was directly in charge of only 12% of the initial NEAR token supply, while the remaining 88% of tokens were either controlled by investors or the protocol itself. This is a huge problem in terms of real decentralization and a potentially major roadblock when regulations begin to get more defined by government organizations such as the SEC. To conclude, NIA has introduced some exciting modifications to the Ethereum infrastructure, like strong developer-focused incentives, lower fees, faster transactions, and a much higher transaction throughput. 
But the highly centralized token distribution and high cost to become a validator are major holes and have meant that near adoption has lagged behind other smart contract protocols.